Hey everybody, welcome back to the episode of this, this, <laughs> wow, I can't even talk. Welcome back to an episode of The Scared Gamer. Uh, today we're going to continue on with Black Rose. Um, so I think we were just at the coffin here and I had a hard time running away from her. So let's uh, get back into this. We'll take this key one more time. And wait for her to show up, which she should in any second now, I'm sure. Yes, okay. So here she comes, so let's just keep running. Let's see if we can avoid this chick this time. Run up and around this way. Still following me, sweetheart? No, no, you're there somewhere. Whoa, 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 whoa. I like how she just kind of randomly appears out of freaking nowhere there. God damn. That's not fair. Not fair at all. Now, as I've played this a little bit, I've realized that she's actually really not that hard to avoid. Um, like, see, she's coming here. I can actually just run up and around her kind of like that. Um, I have played this a little bit. Um, I, uh, I'd actually recorded this episode already, and I had, uh, I'd messed up on the recording. So, um, this, this episode should be pretty quick, like, getting through a lot of stuff. Okay, so we have the gold key. I know the gold key we have to take down here into this chapel and open this up. Dun, dun, dun. Open that up, thank you very much. <clears throat> The only way to keep Myrtle in her coffin is to lock it. I thought I'd locked it before, but someone else had either unlocked it, either that, or the lid was forced open. I'm gonna guess it was forced open. It's key labeled Myrtle. Excellent. <clears throat> All right. See, so yeah, when I had recorded this episode before, I did this recording just got screwed up, and so I should be able to just run through the next 15 minutes or so of this video really quick. Um, only because I know um, what I'm supposed to be doing, more or less. Alright, so let's lock up this coffin. Is she in there? I should probably do what the note said. I need to lock this thing. Let's lock it. Keep her locked up. A silver key fell from inside the coffin. I say, well, the room one. Excellent. I think that was that door with the two locks on it. Perfect. Oh, Jesus. Okay, now she's pissed. Now she's pissed. I'm just gonna run. I'm just gonna run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Run, 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 run. Run, run, run. That's all my life is all about. It's just running. Damn it, the door's jammed. Okay, well, open it. Ram it in. Come on, come on, come on. She's gonna be coming. She's gonna be coming. Run away. Run away like a scared little girl. Just run. There we go. Now run. Or don't. What is that? I'm not asking you to speak to me, but I made something of you today. At first I thought about going and picking you the prettiest flowers I could find, but decided not to. Flowers are beautiful, but eventually they die. Instead I made you an Oregon rose. Paper will never wither, just like my love for you. This rose is black because the love we once shared is gone. Morbid. Um, it was lost in the darkness, and there's no ignoring that, however. Even if this love is no longer mutual, there's still one side that will never die. This rose is our symbol. It's our symbol. Isn't that sweet? Alright. Now. Oh yes, now I can go this way. What the hell is that? Okay. What the hell is that all about? Can I get to this thing yet? No. No, no. Pain and suffering has warped their bodies. Okay, now. I don't remember where the hell to go now. Do we read this note yet? Yes, we did. Um, bum, 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 bum. Nope, not that way. All right. Hmm. So let's figure out where we need to go. This is just a big empty room. Yes, we know that. We cannot get in the... What is that? That's the family room. Doors work pretty badly. I don't think we'll be able to get it open. That's got to open sometime later in the game. It just has to. Um, there was nothing else in here. Sorry that I'm just kind of running through this here. I'm just trying to figure out where I need to go. Because I don't remember. 
Um, like I said, I had played a little bit of this level already. Um, so I know that, uh, oh, you know what? We need to unlock this door with uh, this visitation room with the key that we found. Great. Okay, so we got the first lock done. Yeah, we can't open up the second one. Ah, oh, there's a note here, though. Ever since my first day working here, I've felt a little strange. Now, after what happened that day, things seem to be getting even stranger. I'd even go so far as to say creepy. I'd say creepy, too. I've been an embalmer for years now, and I'm very passionate about my job. I've always felt comfortable with what I do, so it's pretty unusual that I feel this way. Two of my colleagues have died. I had to embalm them both. However, grief can't explain this feeling. Up until just four days ago, I hadn't even known about the history of this funeral home. I already knew that it was ridiculously old, but what I didn't know was that it allegedly harbors some kind of powerful aura which traps and torments the spirits of people who have died in a state of grief or fear and have at some point been associated with the building in one way or another. These associations apparently include those occurring post-mortem, such as embalmings and funerals. Good to know. Alright, so that's just... Oh, oh, what the hell is that? I don't know what the hell it is, but I'm just not sticking around in there. Okay, weird noise, weird noise, I don't know what the hell it is. Hell it is. Alright. Where do I need to go now? Oh crap, 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 crap. Who the hell is that? Okay, he's not coming after me. So I should be going after him. Maybe. Oh, what's that? That wasn't there before. Mr. Reigns, Mr. Reigns, please tell your son to stop playing under the tables during funeral services. It's just disruptive and upsetting to the grieving families. Today he also stole one of the keys to the visitation room, which I need, and was later attempting to open one of the drawers in the morgue. Creepy. This type of behavior is unacceptable and will not be tolerated. If you do not start controlling him, I will take it upon myself to personally teach him a lesson. Michael. I like this Michael guy. Sounds like he's ready to uh, kick some kid ass. Okay, so this door is open now. Is there anything in here? There's a note there. Okay. Pretty nondescript and nothing around here. Alright, let's read the note. Let's read the note. There we to go. make things even weirder, this place has a serious lockdown system. As we've noticed. Yesterday was the first time I've ever seen it used, and many of the workers, including myself, were ordered to wait in the family room until the situation was taken care of. Taken no care of. No one I've spoken to about it knows why it was done, or at least they won't say. All I know is that these safety glass windows and electronic gates appear to be designed for keeping things <clears throat> in rather than out. Well, that's not good. I was the first responder that day. I was the first and only person to make it to Myrtle's side before she passed away. She managed to give Sullivan a parting I love you on that baby monitor, but that was the last communication they ever had. The last thing she ever did was give me that piece of paper. It was a short poem she had written for Sullivan earlier that day. She asked me to give it to him, and I promised her I would. Then she slipped away. I guess Sullivan had picked up by Myrtle's weak rasping in the baby monitor that something was happening to her, because soon after she had passed, he came running into the hall from the upstairs arrangement room. But he was too late. She was gone. That's when he broke down. I'd never seen him show so much emotion towards Myrtle before. Then, of course, the rest happened. I'll keep my rest promise, of what? even now. It's all I can do for <clears> you, <throat> dear friends. It says, then of course the rest happened. What was the rest? Oh, good. Same point. That's always, that's always good. <clears throat> Apparently the checkpoint save points in this game are very far apart. Alright. 
And this is also the part where the sound cuts out, which is what happened to me before as well. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to uh, do a quick little time warp here, guys, and we're going to go right back to where we are here. Hey, everybody, sorry about that little time warp there. Um, I actually time warped enough that uh, I changed my clothes. <laughs> but anyway, let's get back into it right where we left off. And we actually have sound now, which is great. There are a lot of strange things I've seen around this place. For instance, the fireplace that isn't even a real fireplace. It's some kind of ladder shaft, but there's a tough ladder metal shaft. grate fastened over it that appears to be controlled electronically, most likely by the lockdown system. I'm assuming the shaft leads down to the basement, but it must have been sealed off because it's not accessible from anywhere down there. Another thing I've started wondering about is a metal handle that's been sitting on Michael's desk for about a month now. I asked about it once out of curiosity, but he avoided giving me a direct answer. He told me it broke off of something. I had already assumed this, seeing as it's covered in dirt and rusted around the edges where it had clearly been attached to something for a very long time. Perhaps the biggest mystery I've encountered here is the place Myrtle always went for privacy. She was often depressed, so she was always going into the downstairs hall on her way to wherever it was she went to be alone. However, she seemed to vanish. The only place she could have gone from that hallway is down into the basement, but I went down there one day to ask her something and I couldn't find her. I'm wondering if there's a secret room somewhere down there. After all, I did learn from Michael that this building is from the 1600s, long before it was ever a funeral home. Buildings as old as this one sometimes have quite a few secret areas. Secret areas. Yes, there always is one. So I guess we'll have to find it eventually. Who's... The hell was that? Oh, because this overlooks... Oh, that's that chapel area. What if it's coming from down there? Yeah, we'll go down there in a minute. Let's read this note here. They still haven't buried them. Sullivan has been lying in his coffin now for two days and Myrtle for three. Mm, because stinky. Conrad refused to touch Myrtle's coffin after her funeral, it had to be put aside so Sullivan could have his. Conrad still simply doesn't want to have anything to do with the burial of either of them, even if all he's doing is preparing a future grave without actually touching the coffins. I'm starting to wonder if he had some type of unpleasant encounter with Myrtle and Sullivan's coffins, or he heard some absurd rumor about their corpses. What's sad is that Myrtle and Sullivan don't have relatives who care enough about their burials to actually do something about this. Michael was embarrassed to have to tell all the relatives and friends that the actual burials couldn't be held yet. Even so, none of them objected. Maybe they just didn't see a point in doing so considering the person they would be doing it for is already gone. I don't know. I don't know either. As far as feeling nervous around coffins, I do get a strange vibe now in the visitation room. The atmosphere in there is starting to feel different. The air feels heavier, a little bit oppressive even. It seems to be more noticeable today than it was yesterday. I'm not quite sure if I believe in ghosts or not, but it seems to fit what I've heard before about locations having uncomfortable negative energy due to evil or extremely upset spirits. Maybe it's just normal stuffy air. There aren't any windows in there, and it is the middle of summer. I'm just guessing it's not the normal stuffy air. I'm just guessing. Okay, so... So we need to go check out the basement area. And, oh, I wanted to check out this chapel area too. <clears throat> ah, and there's another note. Seems to be a lot of stories so far, which is good. Everything's starting to come together a little bit. It turns out that Devin got into the morgue by stealing Sullivan's key card from the office. Mrs. Rains had been in there and forgot to lock it when she left. Nobody knows exactly how the kid figured out the passcode, but considering what a flake his mother is, that's probably just something else she inadvertently compromised. They're burying Sullivan with a few of his belongings from the funeral home. 
I guess because he had worked here for so long and was so loyal to his job. Michael revealed that one of those belongings is Sullivan's keycard. Of course, they would need to deactivate it from the system to avoid any breaches in the chance that it was stolen, but then again, Mrs. Raines would be the one who would do that. I discovered earlier today that Devon had stolen the system lock override key as well and hidden it somewhere in the building. This has got to be the most troublesome, ill-behaved kid I have ever encountered. Okay, so he was buried with his key card. Which of course we're gonna have to go and get out of his coffin, I guess. Oh, what do we got here? Grief-stricken man killed by train after blinding himself. 57-year-old Sylvan James, one of the two funeral directors, blah 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 blah. That's a lot to read, I'm not gonna read it to you. If you guys wanna read it for yourselves, pause it. I'm, I'm not even gonna read it for myself. Uh, they never buried either of them. Both are still here. That's a nice picture of Sullivan and Myrtle's children. I guess they knew each other a long time. Something written on the back. They say that if you take his rose, he wakes up. That's the only way to open his coffin. Or his coffin will open, sorry. I heard that he also tears you into three pieces if he catches you. So we gotta take his rose to... Get the coffin open? In which case... Something under the table. Look under. It's another note. Or... Or a freaky kid. They won't find it ever. There's a key here labeled V Room 2. Excellent. That is the key for the second lock that we need on that room. So let's just go there. Yep. All those attending the funeral service for Sullivan James, please gather in the visitation room. Um, well, I guess that's where we're going anyway, so. Alright. I'm gonna go zippity doo da. I hear like all this creepy. Yeah, it's coming from the other side of the store. I don't know if that's like people supposed to be whispering or. God. Alright. Let's go follow the uh, ghostly figures, shall we? No, nothing, nothing. Yeah, so here's the fire grate he was just talking about. And that, yeah, now that I look at it, it does look like a ladder. I thought it was just a... Uh, what do they call those things you put the wood on? Wood holder? I think there was actually a name for it. <clears throat> Got here a key. Oh, this is... This is a cough. I thought it was a key card, not a key. Yeah, to me this looks like a... Coffin with the lid up and then the key or that was the key card he had. Okay. Alright. Now we can get in here and check. Oh, 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 oh. Don't get all like freaky dark on me and stuff. Nobody come what is that? The weirdo little paintings here we got going on. Mm. It's kind of weird how the, the little lights up here are flashing on the little lion head things here. Oh, there's this coffin there. <laughs> dare you, dare you, double dare you. Oh, look at that right on top of there is a rose. There's a black origami rose lying on top of the coffin. Take it. Well, the note said we needed to take it to open up his coffin, right? So let's do that. It's not opening. There's nobody around here. Okay. I must be missing some 
Maybe this isn't the right coffin? But there's a rose on it, so that makes sense to me. Maybe there's something else I'm missing. There's this creepy picture of up here. It's like a guy feeding a dead guy or something? I don't know how that is. Oh, but if you look at his hand, he's doing this. One in the one in the pink, one in the stink. Anyway. <laughs> Sorry, couldn't resist. Oh, what the hell was that? Can you help me out? Oh, what oh 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 oh. No, 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 no. Okay, this door is locked. Sullivan James was blind as a bat. Oh, it's you this Sullivan time? James fell down flat. Sullivan James okay, is it's... withered and blue. Sullivan okay, James okay. is coming for you. No, 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 he's not. 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 Let me out. 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 God damn this is a box. Let me out. Incredibly loud. Incredibly loud. Something just fell where Sullivan was. Not only could I not see anything, but it was freaking loud and annoying. Okay, so where was Sullivan? He was up here somewhere. He was... Oh, the security card. And that, I think I know where that goes. There was this room way, way back here. Over here, okay. Pain and suffering has warped their bodies. That's right, I remember that now. <clears throat> Enter passcode. Damn it, I don't know the passcode. <laughs> the hell is that? I wasn't there before. Count the lines between the lines. Oh, this must be the code for the for the door thingy. So there's an X is two lines, right? So it's two. Which number's two? Two, six, four, four. Because they always aren't not a line, right? It's a circle, it's not a line. Two, six, four, four. Get a shot. Two, six, four, four. Let me in. Okay. <clears throat> Let's try something different. Let's try two. Count the circles as one line, I guess, even though it's not really a line. So two, nine, four, seven. Right? That makes sense. Uh -huh. 
Haha, <laughs> that was it. Alright. Let's see where we go now. Oh, now we're in the, the morgue type area. Around here. Oh, a whole cabinet of drugs that I can't get. Of course. Nothing else lying around here. You know, they can get rid of that walking clip, clip, clip. Like, every freaking step I take is clip, 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 clip. It's kind of annoying. Alright, and this is... Yeah. Can I open any of these? Is it... Did they sell the boat? Oh no, that was Sullivan's coffin. I got the key out of that already. Alright. I cannot open any of those. Oh, there's a note there. Everyone here is dead. They've all been killed. I can see that. Ghosts in this house are not like ghosts in other houses. If they're looking for something specific, their corpses actually get up. Someone threw the lockdown switch and I can't get out. I finally found the override key, but I'm not sure exactly where the switch is. Although I might have an idea. I remember overhearing a conversation Michael was having a few months ago about something which was located underground. I'm confused as to whether or not this underground location is the main basement where Myrtle's coffin is. I went down there a while ago and looked around, but it appears to be mostly a storage space. Maybe I missed it. The basement is extremely dark, even with a flashlight. Yes, it is. Maybe I need to go search again more thoroughly. I need to find the switch. My very life depends on it, as do the lives of many future wanderers if this doesn't stop. Oh, like me. One of the most unsettling things about this funeral home is that after a while, you start to feel as though it's hanging by a thread and on the verge of collapsing, prevented only by the mysterious force that fills the building. It's such a strange feeling. Maybe I'm not the same skeptic I was before working here, but where is that damn switch? Yes, where is that damn switch? In the and deepest part of the house. Okay. Where the hell was that guy and where did he go? So I gotta go to the deepest part of the house? Which is the basement, right? <laughs> Jesus Christ! Okay, now I can hear like some... The talking seems to be coming from here. Well, it's not coming from there anymore. Can I do anything with that? No? Okay. Okay, I'm really not even keen on going back through this way anymore. No bodies or anything in here. Okay, let's get out of this room because it's kind of creeping me out a bit. Nobody there. Okay. Alright guys, so let's end this episode there. Um, I actually don't think this game is too much longer, uh, so we should be able to wrap this up on the next episode. Uh, thanks for watching and subscribing guys, thanks for hitting that like button. Um, like I said, make sure you, <laughs> you go back through, look at my whole catalog of horror games. Um, anyway, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.